It's the eve of one of the biggest opening weeks in San Francisco history, a series of events that will cost more than a million dollars and climax with the unveiling of the city's newest and largest museum, the Asian Art Museum. It's an occasion that's been in the works for more than 40 years, since 1959, when Asian art collector Avery Brundage donated 8,000 works of art to the city of San Francisco. The Asian Art Museum was originally housed in a wing of the de Young Museum in Golden Gate Park. But that location was only a temporary home until the money could be raised to renovate the museum's ultimate destination, the old main public library. Yeah. And then tell him I'll be reading, to kick it off, a letter from President Bush congratulating them. That should Supporters of the museum, the like co-chair Judy Wilbur, lobbied tirelessly yeah, to bring the museum to the heart of the city, overcoming every political hurdle and raising the money needed to complete the building project. The battle is won, but the campaign is far from over. With 150 new staff members and 185,000 square feet of museum space to maintain, expenses have doubled to 13 million a year. And there's a second phase of construction still to come, projected to cost as much as $60 million. For the development team here, the museum's opening is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to solicit the support they need to keep the museum moving forward. The doors will open out, and out will pour 110 children from the West Portal School who will be drummers, fan dancers, ribbon dancers. They'll all come to the stage. And while During the 10 days leading up to the museum's opening, 35 separate events are scheduled. Do those need to be struck following each event, or can they be left in place? Each one is carefully designed to court a different type of supporter, from corporate marketing executives and the city's social elite to volunteer docents and families with children. <laughs> it makes me nervous when the fire inspector rolls his eyes at me. There will be maybe some light incense. Event planner Sylvia Wilkerson has been working full-time on the opening for almost eight months. But now, just 13 days out, her main job is to anticipate every possible problem. I guess my worst nightmare would be rain, because I think that, excuse the pun, would dampen just the experience for most people. One of the boldest strokes of the museum's launch campaign was the decision to design and execute a banner for two sides of the museum's facade. Designed and fabricated by Chinese-American artist Pop Chow, the banner covers more than 22,000 square feet. Today, it's being hung by expert riggers just in time for the first of the museum's opening events. Can I be excused for a moment? Thank you, everybody. I have to go check on our rigging. I'll be right back. <laughs> it was all done in China, and so we're just trying to see metric to inches to feet. <laughs> <laughs> has proven an, an artistic challenge. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Well, oh, yes, it is. Well, I don't understand. Is it too long here? It's too wide. We can do it, but I would have to weld more brackets this weekend, and I'd have to bring four guys back on Monday. The choice is either to fold it back onto itself or carry it into the other side of the building. And the artist is here, so, of course, the artist, for artistic value, would like it to extend beyond and not just fold it in. If it were a company, you could say, yes, we have to do it. If it's a nonprofit organization, you're in a position that you have to weigh if the cost is really worth it. Let me ask the chair. I would think you're 20 feet around. Yeah. I would do that, because it finishes off your whole part of the building. OK. OK. I needed your approval or All David right. late. So, right. okay. Don't tell David, but I said okay. yes. <laughs> okay. He said to defer to you, so. Okay. Tonight is the first of many free events for donors to the museum. We're supposed to have a huge store, but I think we're well prepared for it. While guests arrive, caterers are hard at work. Over the course of the next week, a staff of 110 will prepare meals for more than 10,000 people. Even with donations of wine and services, the catering tab alone for the opening events will top $450,000. It definitely takes money to make money because there's a tremendous production team in the case of this evening or events later in the week that have to be in place. The next day, it's yet another event, this time an open house for museum members and the banner along Fulton Street is continuing to play a starring role. What's happening now is, is the wind's hitting the building, it's kind of starting there, and it's building up this big wave action, and when the time it gets about here, it kind of pulls it out, and it's just pulling all the weight away from the wall. So uh, 
we've been to the hardware store and there were times buying some more sand. <laughs> we just do our best and see what happens. It's March. It's March. <laughs> With just 24 hours to go before the museum opens, the pace of activity is accelerating. Tonight is the most lavish of the opening events, a sit-down dinner for donors of $100,000 and up. Donor events like this one are the cornerstone of fundraising campaigns at many arts organizations, including the Asian. Tickets normally cost patrons hundreds or even thousands of dollars. But this week, all of the Asian's opening events are free an expensive gesture that organizers hope will pay off in future gifts to the museum. The return is enormous because this is the reason for doing these events. This is our museum family, and these are the people who more than, they deserve more than a big hug and a kiss and a thank you, because without them, this museum would not have happened. As the final details of the evening's event fall into place, a new set of problems loom. Eclipsing the decor, and the sudden downpour. Just as guests are arriving, word comes that the first strike on Iraq has been launched. By 7 a.m. on opening day, the streets of San Francisco are filled with protesters, blocking many of the intersections near the museum. We have good support from the police, and actually, to be honest with you, I think people are are respectful that we are an or arts organization and we're just all together in this, although I say that as I look at a whole battalion of police coming this way, but um, you know, we're, we're just going to make the best of it and we're going to go with it and try to have an upbeat feeling about it, so I think it's going to be good. With protesters and police facing off in the blocks surrounding Civic Center, the decision is made to cancel the fireworks display and several performances. But in some ways, the backdrop of war and protest makes this hard-won achievement seem even more precious. Wars highlight all that is problematic in our world and troubling with humanity. And today we are celebrating that which is wondrous in our world, that which enriches our spirit, that which nourishes our soul. Thank you.